I'm so glad so many of you could make it. And to those honourable senators who fell to the menace of the Caledonian raiders, we shall say prayers each day until they are avenged, I assure you. And I assure you also that the matters at hand could not wait until that work was done, for they transcended. I have received much word from our allies in the remnants of the Eastern Empire, from my son, the Emperor, of course. And, as we have heard elsewhere, he confirms that Constans and Aurelianus are alive, holding the province of Thracia against the Easterners, a service that has preserved the true empire thus far, but no longer. Now the Emperor insists that further aid will be required. That is why we are here. I object! I must object, Consul! Oh, go on then, Tribune. I wish to put it to you that this Senate and the fate of the deceased Imperial family is of no concern to Britannia. You brought this up entirely for your own contrived idea that you can merge yourself into highborn blood, and the blood of Britannian senators has been spilt because of it, not to mention our citizens. So down with your outrageous motion, I say. <laughs> Words of a man who seeks to cower from the threats those very senators and those very citizens face. You say that no sacrifice on our part is needed, that one Roman cannot take action to help another. The matter of my familial ties is a mere convenience to my motivation. I would happily send troops were it your son begging for aid, Tribune. Then will you go yourself? Will you take your legion to Greece? <laughs> and leave Britannia undefended? And even worse, leave them to be ruled only by you, wheezing gentlemen? An offensive suggestion. Besides... We have forces much closer to spare. Hello and welcome back to Fields of Mars. Previously we saw lots of battles against rebels. There was a battle at Thessalonica where rebels failed their siege assault against Aurelianus. Then on the other side of the empire, a small army attacked an even smaller army inside one of our barbarian held towns and utterly failed as well. And Uther finally got in on the action himself, also fighting rebels in the area around Burdigala. Then we saw an attack by the Sassanids, who moved to make a decisive battle against both Aurelianus and Constans, who themselves were moving to attack the Sassanids. So the battle's been raging for a while now, the enemy's overwhelming numbers, not able to get past our fortifications, and now Constans is coming in to make a decisive blow. There's a little trouble outside the fort right now, as some cav I sent to destroy enemy cav, hopefully overwhelming them with numbers, are failing. We've got three units against their one, but we are slowly losing, and it's not because of those hurlers in the background, as I first thought. It's of course the crossbow cav, who are just raining bolts on this melee, killing some of both sides, but they'll be able to hit more of our cav than their own troops, because there are more of our cav there, so it's having a massive negative impact on that fight. The good news, of course, is that Constanza's army is finally going to join this battle, doing a massive wheel around the edge of the fort to come and just strategically outflank the enemy's position here. One of the main problems that this is going to incur for me though, is the fact that during the battle I thought the entire enemy force was now on the field. I didn't realise there were still enemy units yet to come in, and in fact there were quite a lot of enemy units yet to come in. The entire third army wasn't on the field, and I presumed that it was. So now, as you might imagine, Constans is just presenting his flank to that army, and we'll get back to that in a moment. Meanwhile, the cavalry tried to escape from that uh, negative engagement. Didn't quite work, because a couple of them stayed behind and did the class uh, total war thing of the unit being drawn back into the combat because someone's still out there always annoying and I realize that I do complain about small problems in the game for pretty much most of these videos and I am going to continue <laughs> because I believe that combined they do sour the experience because there's so many little quality of life issues like that but anyway moving on we have Aurelianus bringing the heavy cavalry out to play first he finds an exposed unit of hurlers that will have zero chance against him 
so he can cut through those men and then will be in a position to outflank the main blob of enemy infantry back there. He is of course going to also have to contend with the crossbow cavalry who are still out there just taking pot shots at everything. Luckily he's a heavily armoured unit which is a little bit less weak against ranged fire. Plus Constance's army is going to bring archers in as well which is the thing that can take down crossbow cav. The enemy's third army though getting closer and closer. I still haven't seen it at this point in the battle because of the fog on the battle map so just waiting for that to show up. Now that glitch I just complained about comes in my favour because Aurelianus accidentally touches a couple of guys in the crossbow cav unit as it gets caught on a tree or something and they get drawn into a melee with him which is fantastic so they will certainly lose that. Meanwhile Constanze's infantry are setting up ready to attack the bulk of the enemy's infantry first throwing javelins in and then making their charge and they arrive just in time because you can see the enemy are actually breaking through at the very moment that Constance comes to reinforce. They were about to completely fill my fort with like 10 units there. But luckily, we catch them in position here. Aurelianus himself coming back to use his heavy calf to just punch these guys down. A couple of units shatter immediately, the rest going down to Wavering. They'll be off soon, but very bad news out for Constans, where he was sitting in the back of his army, and that army was now completely rear-flanked by the surprise arrival of the third army. His advanced cavalry were fighting with Constans, and he's now struggling to get out of that melee. Most of his troops have gone to conduct the attack on the main body of the enemy's infantry by the fort, so he's really isolated. Luckily, I kept the mercenaries as a reserve, so the Thracians and Germanians will rush in to delay the enemy while Constans tries to escape. He lost pretty much all of his men. He survived, and his unit has routed, but he will come back pretty much straight away. So these units will now just hold the enemy in position because what we don't want is those calves to chase him down and get to him before he reaches the safety of our lines. Meanwhile, the infantry attack has been completely successful. We annihilated the majority of the enemy's troops here and you can see the balance bars now thoroughly in our favor. We've effectively won at this point because we have one and a half armies versus the enemy's three quarters or so of an army and we have the fort to use in our defense. So Constance will have to form up his army ready to receive the new troops coming in, but first he needs to dodge the enemy cataphracts who appear to be chasing him down here. Luckily he is going to make it back in time, his men cheering perhaps with relief as they pass through Aurelianus's cohort auxilia in the entrance to the fort, and the cataphracts aren't going to bother making an attack into the fort because there are more targets outside for them to hit, like these spearmen, which of course they'll do poorly against our legionaries being very dodgy with the friendly fire here, trying to kill the cataphracts and probably killing half of of us beaming at the same time always a good show so now we just need to prepare to receive that last army there so we'll pull all the units into the fort and we'll use Constance's infantry to defend the fort with Aurelianus's men pretty much wiped out in terms of their melee components so we're going to have to do that and you can see huge piles of bodies right outside the fort mainly it's those enemy spear infantry who did terribly against our attack. I've got all these skirmish units outside the fort which I wasn't paying much attention to. I'd ordered them to attack an enemy skirmish unit but that skirmish unit was just running away and drew loads of my units away from the fight and that of course is a huge problem because they're totally isolated and this third army has heavy cataphracts in it they're forming up in wedge formation just to add insult to injury and sneaking onto the flanks of these archer auxilia now who are very exposed i've got nothing nearby that can come and help the enemy are beginning their main attack on the fort but that's almost irrelevant because it has no chance of getting inside but those cataphracts are going to do big damage to these archers. You can see I've just spotted it now, and I'm trying to get all these troops out of the area and try to support using the local javelineers to take down the cataphracts, but the archers were taking huge casualties. Luckily, I actually got away with all this. The archer unit didn't even rout because the main body of enemy troops just gave up the fight. Most of them didn't even reach the front lines. Just as they were coming in, they suddenly decided, no, nope, we're not going to bother doing this fort assault, which is the right decision in their defense. There was literally no chance of them getting into to the fort in such a disjointed formation and against such numbers. So that brings the battle to an end. Our skirmishes are saved and it is a close victory. You can see the exterior of the fort here just covered in bodies everywhere. A chaotic battle and one that cost us a lot of troops and nearly cost us constans as well. Where were you? I made my banners clear enough for a damned horse to understand. What were you thinking? I was leading the attack, Constans. My men were dying. I'm sorry, but you had just arrived with a fresh army at your side. You'll forgive me for thinking that you'd be okay without any special attention from me. Even if I forgive you, my troops will not. If I had died, you would have faced the same fate for your failures. What failures? Brother, your troops should be angry at themselves, not me. Where were they when this happened? Don't you say anything about my troops. They are heroes without equal. 
Any of them could lead an army better than you. <laughs> Comforting to know, for your death would not have been such a loss then. Let's take a look at the results to that battle. Now, the losses on our side are going to be most significantly on Aurelianus's army because he lost a lot of heavy infantry and specialist troops. He lost a whole unit of legionaries and archer auxilia, which we can't re-recruit, and he lost most of his cavalry, although luckily they can replenish because the unit's still alive. Constans lost basically his mercenaries and his auxilia palatina, both units we can get back and units that aren't very important. The majority of his army is still intact, although of course his personal unit is now damaged and needs to replenish. So for the Sassanid side, big losses of course, although not actually as large as I would have hoped. The armies are still somewhat stable. If you put all three of the survivors from these stacks together, you probably still have a full stack's worth of troops. And I went over just inspecting which enemy units got the kills to confirm my suspicions. And basically it was all crossbow, cav, javelinies and slingers on the enemy side that got the vast, vast majority of the kills. Their infantry and melee cav did really very little against us. So it's just those crossbow have ruining everything ultimately. Now Aaron declared war on us. I wasn't really sure when I'd got peace with them. Apparently I had, but they're at war with us again. And that's going to be significant because they do have forces nearby. They control the Greek city-states in Asia. You can see them here and they even have control of the water in the area. So they could come and attack us along with the Sassanids. Now, apparently defeating those Sassanid armies was a mission, so that's nice. I get some free money because of that. We'll hack through all of the uh, pop-ups here. Lots of bad agent news and uh, messages telling us that enemy generals are dead. Rebellion's coming in. And now, this was an interesting one. My relations have improved with Pontus. And I thought, but aren't Pontus completely annihilated? How have I got improved relations? Apparently not. This took me completely by surprise. My puppet state, Pontus, actually still exists. They've gone all the way up here and actually hidden in the corner of the map. And I just never realized because I'd never scrolled over there even though I do have that trade route leading me to it if I'd ever bother to follow that line so that is interesting not necessarily helpful at all because I can't really do anything up there but nice to know they are still alive now back to our forces. I need to move Aurelianus back over here to Thessalonica because it looks like Atribatane are about to attack it with that full stack. And really we need to replenish these armies anyway after the battle with the Sassanids. So I decided I'm not going to go on any offensives right now. We've stopped them going on offensives against me. Or so I thought. You can see I moved Constance back to Constantinopolis. But the Sassanids just moved through where I once was. So we are now going to be punished for going on the defensive here. We should have just maintained our position because all three of the half dead armies rush in and they have enough movement points to just come all the way out of the fog of war right up to Tremontium and attack it and there's really nothing we can do here. So it's really just survivors. I think they must have reinforced with a few extra units. They've got new generals of course and perhaps have pulled in new mercenaries. But lots of half dead units left over from that battle basically. Big advantage for them on the balance bar. I decided to try and fight it but the problem we'll have here is that Tremontium is this map where there's six or seven different ways to get into the center of the town so you can't really choke point the enemy as well as usual. So basically I'm fighting this like a last stand battle and it's kind of interesting you have different priorities. If you're fighting a battle where you know you'll probably lose you need to fight it differently because in order to completely destroy an enemy unit back on the campaign map if the enemy side wins the threshold for how many troops you have to kill is very very high you have to basically wipe out the entire unit down to single figures left in order for it to be deleted on the campaign map whereas if the enemy lose the battle you only have to defeat about 80 percent of the unit so anyway all that means is that I just need to go after units that are possible to wipe out entirely and not focus on units that I won't have a chance to annihilate, like a cavalry unit that will probably rout away, things like that. Luckily, the enemy were really generous in that, although they were forming up most of their armies outside the town before they made the attack, a few units, they thought, well, we'll just send them in anyway. So a couple of half-dead spear units came in and were just easy prey. We annihilate them with the cavalry. So that's going to guarantee we have now definitely done some damage to the enemy that we wouldn't necessarily see from an auto resolve because we've wiped out units entirely they won't be able to replenish them so when the enemy came eventually once they gathered up their forces they didn't really make use of all the different choke points they just kind of came in in two giant lines but i guess that's enough because their advantage is so large and they have so many uh, crossbow cav and skirmisher units that can just cut down my men 
They're basically, they'll be able to smash through even without going around to, to the back. So I'm just basically ignoring the infantry. I'm going to micro the cavalry to try and find things I can defeat, especially isolated skirmishing units, the most important ones, because we can just wipe them out entirely and prevent big damage in the future without much threat of repercussion during this battle because all the enemies are distracted trying to attack my infantry. So after a while, I just got bored of that and went into a triple speed because our men had no chance of fighting and basically the battle ends soon. We managed to somehow get a close defeat, so we must have defeated a few of the enemy, but uh, really we never really got anywhere close to dealing significant damage to them. So let's just hope we got enough units. Let's look at the results here. In that first army, four whole units taken out, so that's pretty good. Actually halving the strength of that first army, it's theoretical strength at least, since uh, once the replenishment's done it will now be smaller. Still those crossbow cav getting plenty of kills and wiping out our infantry, making that battle go much faster than it would have otherwise. And some decent damage to the other armies as well, managing to take out a few whole units for them, although that final army only won. Disappointing, I guess they didn't take part too much in the battle. So that's something, and actually the Sassanids just sack Trimontium and leave it like so many other armies have done before, so we will have a chance to go and clear that situation up. But also, another army from the Sassanids appears out of nowhere and besieges Constans inside the city. They have a lot of forces nearby, it seems. Father has brought a present back from his campaign. An army for me to fight. He has given me command of the city garrison. An army, he says, outmatches that of Uncle Aurelianus. Whatever. Still the army of a child. Doesn't have its own banners, no supply train. Militia with a standing fee, really. I thought he would ask me to break the siege with just them. His tests have been similarly deadly in the past. But no, we are to work together. The people of the city need to be shown that what he is to them, I am also. Standing side by side in victory, that will be clear. He says that I shouldn't even be writing about such things, for what we write of the times as they happen is sure to be used against us. His excuse for spending all day at the races, perhaps? It's the end of the end turn sequence, and that means it's time for more rebellions. The rebellion at Octaduran finally comes in to attack the settlement, but our big garrison is now ready. Plus, the rebel army seems to be damaged, probably by winter attrition, and is very poorly composed, once again lacking infantry components to really make a siege assault possible. So anyway, I just ought to resolve them out of existence, since we had a big advantage on the balance bar there, and we don't even take many losses, wiping their entire army out exactly what we wanted, so that plan's seems to work. But at Turinam we've also got another rebel attack coming in. So it's similar to the battle we saw in the previous episode, only this time there's about twice the number of enemy units and it's actually slightly in their favour. So perhaps a little bit more interesting. We really need to get more than just these four Legio Comita tenses to hold this town. But this battle certainly is nothing unwinnable, so I came in to fight it. So I'm starting off with a very similar strategy to what I did last time, defending the exact same point, and once again just looking to the enemy's onages to see what they do with them, because that will define everything that we need to do in response. And it seemed they actually did nothing at all. They look very ready to fire at any moment, but it's just not happening. And this guy over here seems to have some very unusual balding spots on the back of his head as well, but that's probably not his primary concern right now. So with nothing happening, that really helps us out. So we don't have to take the knowledge of fire. It looked like the enemy were going to attack the town up two different avenues. So I'm just splitting my army up to make sure we have both defended. The enemy send their shock cavalry to come towards the main bulk of our troops here and actually this shock cavalry is going to have good potential for damage against us. We kill a few with darts and they charge down this small slope into our men and actually go right through the first unit. I should have put these guys in stationary testudo because that basically reflects cavalry charges magically but uh, yeah, in this case they've been really heavily damaged by that attack although the, the uh, shock cavalry will now be surrounded and destroyed in that infantry engagement. Plus they've sent some infantry to take on the barricade with lead on top of it so the darts will now start flying down to wipe out that unit very soon especially with the tower shooting them at point blank range meanwhile my other unit just about gets around to the other side of town to stop the rest of their army they seem to send most of their troops in this direction and my unit takes a cavalry charge here as well but it's just regular cavalry so it doesn't really do the same level of damage 
they will now have to hold out against all those units over there. So we need to send this unit from the other side of town to go and support them. And that's fine because we've pretty much won on this side of town. The shot cavalry are dead. And that unit of medium infantry routed but then came back from routing. So now it's just a couple of men trying to get through the barricade. So we wipe them out and then go to support by attacking the back of the main enemy blob. These troops had to double back on themselves in order to avoid a deadly rain of fire from the onager back there. Which has now finally got something to shoot at. So they'll charge towards the enemy's main infantry blob while the other unit's going to deal with that on a just so they don't have to keep facing that fire from them and of course that's not going to be very hard at all so we take them out and then that unit can very slowly come over to help as well but it's now very far from the action so it will be a while now as my unit approaches you can see my unit coming around from the other direction arrives at about the same time to support my nearly routed general's unit or captain's unit holding out against the enemy push. The enemy force here is kind of like a mix of units that are worse and better than the Legio Comitatensis so it's just kind of going evenly but the tower is doing good damage to the enemy and to us admittedly of course. Now as I approach with my rear attack the enemy for some reason send their slingers down to stop me with a melee attack so not sure if that's the best idea not going to last very long also some routing cavalry here will not have fun trying to get through our unit so as you might expect this little fight quickly turns into a slaughter of the slinger units and we can just cut them down so that's great since they didn't get to use their actual uh, slinging ability which would have done a lot of damage to our men had they chosen to do that so now this unit's going to be free to advance up to the rear of the rest of the enemy's infantry now it's just a couple of infantry units left the balance bar starting to edge into our favor at this point so here we come in for the rear attack. The enemy are pushing through at the front though and have actually defeated one of the two units holding at the front. So we clearly don't have forever there. We do need to take the enemy out if we can. Our attack values aren't particularly high so it's going to take a while. But luckily they're basically defeated at this point. The Limitani border guards, their terrible unit starts routing. And they're going to route through our men. And this almost seems to cause a problem because our men start cheering in reaction to the rout. But seem to forget they're also in combat with another unit at the same time. And those guys are now cutting them down. Plus they're cheering so heartily they forget to actually kill the Limitani. We need to kill more of them to get them to actually shatter. After a while, though, the enemy general manages to die. He was, for some reason, behind our troops out here on his own. Perhaps he waded in a little bit too deep to that fight. So now our infantry will have an easier time. They actually did defeat all of my infantry on our side of the town and turn around to face my rear attack, turning it into a frontal attack, basically. But by this point in the fight, they had nothing left in them, and the tower there was smashing them from behind the entire time. So basically that went fine. We chased them down in order to defeat as many of them as we can to get rid of the enemy on the campaign map. But we did lose more than half our troops to defend the settlement, so it only ends in a Pyrrhic victory. But against the rebellion with a garrison, that is enough. I'm astounded that people would fight so hard to preserve our control over that of another identical band of fallen Romans is really just strange, but humbling of course. It's making my job a lot easier at the very least. We must do something to reward such actions. These people were sold out by their leaders to us, and clearly that isn't the sort of treatment they appreciate. Our consuls do not seem to care about what happens to them now, so it's up to us to show them that Britannia can do something good for them. Well, actually, that's not even true. Britannia just wants to export all their food. But I can do something good for them. A forgotten leader for these forgotten people. Fits so well that I suspect Julianus contrived this just to embellish his damn book. So it's goodbye to that rebellion, but of course this is going to be a repeating pattern if we can't come up with a more permanent solution. So we probably are going to want to do the same thing that we did at Octoduron here and increase the garrison using the specific garrison building just to make the place invincible. So we can always just order to resolve those fights and not spend half the campaign constantly fighting that same battle over and over again. So there's the news about Tremontium being sacked and we'll hack through the billions of other pieces of bad and good news. More rebellions coming up, always nice to see. So we need to deal with those Sassanid armies, three half-dead stacks just standing there, now both in range of Aurelianus and Constans, and they're not looking particularly strong, so I'm very confident we can just take them out. Constans first, though, needs to take out a more powerful army, currently besieging him inside the city. 
Now, unfortunately for that army, Constanze's force is on its own more powerful than them. Plus, he's going to have the city garrison led by his son Septimus, bringing almost another full stack of troops out onto the field. And because of that, you can see the balance bar gives the enemy no chance of success whatsoever. So we can just uh, leisurely delete them. And the enemy guy just kind of falls over dead for some reason. It doesn't play an animation for our side, I guess because the character's too far away or something. But there you go, a decisive victory and uh, actually moderate losses, although losses to the garrison, of course, don't matter in this context. And Constant still has plenty of troops to head out and deal with the rest of the Sassanids. So we're going to use both Aurelianus and Constans at the same time here, just to maximize our local strength, because we might as well, there's not much else to do. Thessalonica, as you may have noted, wasn't actually attacked by Atropatani, their army just went away during the intern sequence, so I guess they just gave up on that idea, good for us. So Constans will come over with Aurelianus now supporting to engage a battle here, all of the enemies are in reinforcement range of each other, but they just run away, and this is kind of the perfect thing that can happen, really. So every time we engage one of these armies, they're just going to retreat. And they retreat all in separate directions. That's the key here. So we're basically breaking up their reinforcement chain, because now they're not close enough to each other to fight in the same battle, meaning they're going to be super vulnerable, since each army on its own is pretty much nothing, just a few scrappy units. Uh, they're going to be doomed from now on. So here we have the Sassanids effectively defeated, even though they still have three armies in our territory so I'm thinking about what to do with Aurelianus I want to send him back towards Constantinopolis just because I'm paranoid that the Sassanids will just appear again with an another full stack from the fog of war because we have no idea what their full capacity actually is so I'm going to send Aurelianus back. He can luckily just about get into reinforcement range of the town. Unfortunately, not inside, but that's better than nothing. And as for the other three, I first thought I might not actually be able to take them out all in this turn. But then I remembered that when you move through your own settlements, it doesn't use any movement points. So Constans can move over to this army actually without using any movement points at all. So this is basically a free kill. So we'll annihilate that guy in an order to resolve. And the way the town is and where all the enemies happen to be basically mean I can keep moving through the town and getting to these armies so I can do this without really using up movement points somehow which is very very nice indeed so there goes the second army and we move on and take on the third through all the auto resolves I actually did lose one unit of Germanic cav I think because we are taking gradual attrition by constantly taking down these armies but really nothing serious and Constans is now going to be free to head into the town to start improving public order now you can see we are actually on the verge of rebellion, but I can be pretty cheeky here because Constans leveled up from all of those victories. And I'm going to take a level up that improves public order. So that ever so slight improvement that that will give us actually takes us just over the edge of rebellion and back onto the peaceful side of the scale. So we'll now have one extra turn before a rebellion occurs. So particularly cheeky, not particularly helpful, but still it may allow us to prepare a little bit better and distribute our forces. And on the topic of rebels, Uther is once again at it. There's another rebellion near Berdegala and he's just having no mercy, just attacking them when they're small so he can just get a free victory every single time. A repeating pattern for him that's going to go on forever unless he also can do something to somehow improve public order. We don't have the population or the building slots to really do anything in terms of uh, actually improving public order that way, but we can use level ups to help us, just like with Constans. And in this case, I can use the, the army level up to get the civic duty perk, which will improve public order very nicely. So overall, our plans to clear up the empire and take out all of the threats in our territory seem to be working and becoming somewhat stable, but we've still got a very long way to go. The empire was apparently more stable as a series of small states than a large one. While many have given a myriad of political arguments to explain this, we must also consider the religious approach. The pre-Britannia Roman administration strongly imposed an organized state religion on their citizens, usually Latin or Greek Christianity. But now the state religion was simply Roman paganism, a broad group of possible belief systems that offered little unity within the empire. The sons of Constantinus who ruled the greater part of this empire almost certainly had different beliefs to the people they towered above, despite having the same religion from a distance. This provided compelling reasons for virtually any Roman to justify taking violent or criminal action through their spirituality. Thanks for watching, we'll get into Julianus' plan to save his son, the head of the Eastern Roman Empire, next time on Fields of Mars.